let's get started. Yeah. So a topic of supercharge your Kubernetes auto scaling with custom metrics. Uh, myself, Vamshi Samudrala, Enterprise Architect, American Airlines, uh, for cloud engineering platforms. Hey, I'm, I'm Shravanak Nepali, Lead Engineer, Kubernetes Platform Team. So yeah, so let's go through what we, we just will go brief across what is auto scaling, and uh, there are different types of auto scaling, but we will touch base across horizontal part auto scaler, and we'll just explore some custom metrics. What do you mean by custom metrics, and what can be used to scale the HPA, uh, and implementing that HPA with custom metrics. So we'll look into two things, what's Prometheus Adapter and Keda, and uh, we'll have a live demos that uh, we'll be scaling across. And we will discuss about some best practices with custom metrics, and if then we can go into Q&A. So horizontal part auto scaler with custom metrics, right? So it's, Auto scaling is a powerful feature uh, in a container orchestration world for your applications that automatically wants to scale up and down based on the resource utilization, right? So in this, we will explore HPA basically. Uh, auto scaling, you know, we have three different types of auto scaling: cluster auto scalers, uh, horizontal pod auto scalers, and vertical pod auto scalers, right? But how and why we use Kubernetes auto scaling? Basically, for resource optimization. Kubernetes or enables your applications to scale based on your demand, ensuring optimal resource utilization, right? And reliability, improving your real, uh, reliability and also per per performance for the applications based on your traffic and resource. That's why you want to auto scale. And the cost optimization. So most of the organizations uh, will look into cost optimizations also. When you don't want to run your resources, we don't want to. We want to shut down and just for better financial budget, right? And not only this, but also overall user experience. So there are a lot of user experience dimensions for the auto-scaling that we will look into for reducing the latency and maintaining uh, consistent performance across the applications, right? So let's deep dive into, for the next two minutes, into the HPA. Let's re- about, uh, let's let's get some met, uh, some things about HPA, right? So what, uh, how does the HPA work and what does it do? There are three basic things that it does. It does monitoring and it, based on the scaling policies, uh, it takes the scaling decisions and uh, dynamic adjustments, right? So monitoring metrics, HPA continuously monitors the resource utilization metrics such as CPU and memory. Uh, and the default that it looks for in the pod is a CPU usage. And the scaling, Policies, right? So you have a target metric value that you define in your YAMLs, and uh, you have minimum and max replicas that you define. Based on that, there's a scaling decision that is taken uh, on the predefined thresholds. Based on that, HPA dynamically adjusts and application behavior scaling on your resources. So coming to metrics. So the common use for HPA is to fetch the metrics from the aggregated APIs, right? So three different APIs that you can see. One is a metrics kh.io, custom metrics dot eight uh, dot IO and external metrics, right? So the metrics dot is the typical metrics server add-on which needs to be launched separately, whereas the custom metrics is for the custom level application metrics. And the external metrics is for the external systems like anything like monitoring tool or uh, cloud services or third party third party systems. So let's deep dive into a bit of metrics server. So HPA is configured to get the metrics from the metrics.kh.io server. And the metrics server uses the Kubelets API that in turn leverages the C advisor on the backend uh, for collecting the resource metrics. So the workflow, how does the workflow here for the metrics server work? So C advisor first collects the raw metrics on each node. And then uh, the kubelet exposes the metrics so that it's a readable API over the API. And then metrics server aggregates this data and moves it to Kubernetes API under the AO, right? So with this, the dynamic scaling happens. But this is not only the CPU and memory. The scaling needs are outside this one. So how many of you experience that there are some other needs for your application other than this? Because there are, for example, take a, bottle, take a bottleneck on the networking side. So not every time you require CPU or memory to scale. So there are some other requests. So that is the custom metrics. Custom metrics are user-defined performance indicators that extend the default resources that CPU and memory uh, that are supported by HPA, right? So 
beyond CPU and memory, and you can see the application level metrics such as queue length, request latency, or the business relevant, any business relevant data that you want to bring in. Uh, there are some external sources also. If you want to feed in some external data, that, that is based on. So this enables, and why we are, why we are looking into this is for, again, the, for the application performance or some other needs that you're looking at it, right? So these are all, these are all the nomenclature that we have got it. How can we use this in our daily life? Can we, okay, let's make an analogy for this, and then let's move into the demos of how we, have, how we can scale this out, right? So let's think about restaurant as a cage cluster, and service as chefs, as like a pods, and the number of customers as a CPU usage, and the manager is like a HPA controller here, and the customer satisfaction is the performance metrics that we are going to scale, right? That we are going to look into. So now, because we are in the conference, there are restaurants down here. Everybody might have gone to some other restaurants, right? So if the restaurant operates like for 10 customers, if I can have only one server, for 50 customers, there are five servers. But that is like how HP is scaling based on your CPU. But if you take an example of custom metrics, the custom metrics may be a customer reservations. You can have, go to the customer reservations that you have it, and you can see the customer feedbacks service based on the customer feedback service or based on the event scheduling. Like these events, when, when the events like this happen, they know that they're estimating the customers and making sure that the wait time at each of the, you are estimating the wait time and making sure that although the wait time is about 10 minutes or more, then you are deploying a server and making sure that the customer performance, customer service satisfaction is not affected, right? So this, this is the analogy that we are looking for custom metrics when you are looking into your Kubernetes clusters. Okay. I'll hand on to Sean. Hey. So I think Vamsi said uh, how custom metrics can be utilized to scale. Sure. Okay, so we're good, so okay. So now let's see how we can use custom metrics and scale HPA. So in this demo, we will see how we can use Prometheus Adopter and Keda to scale our HPA. We divided the implementation into four steps. First, we define our metrics, and then expose those custom metrics, and then configure our HPA to scale on those custom metrics, and then deploy. Okay. So let's first look at uh, how we can use Prometheus Adopter and uh, scale based on custom metrics. So here, we need two components. We need Prometheus, which actually exposes the metrics, and a Prometheus Adopter, which will read the metrics from Prometheus and then uh, presents it to HPA so that the scaling can be done. So as I said, Prometheus and Prometheus Adopter need to be installed, which is not part of basic Kubernetes cluster. And then this is how we can expose a custom metrics. Here we are taking two examples, CPU usage related to our resource limits and memory usage related to resource limits. You guys already might know that HPA by default scales on requests rather than limits. So now we'll see how we can use limits and scale HPA. And then once the metrics is defined, Prometheus can expose those metrics. Now we'll have to present these metrics to HPA. So Prometheus adopter reads the metrics and then sends these metrics to uh, HPA. So this is just a sample configuration on how this uh, custom metrics is configured by Prometheus adopter so that this is presented to HPA. Okay, let's see the demo on how we can use Prometheus adopter. As I said, I already have Prometheus running and Prometheus adopter running. I'll just install a sample application here. Uh, before that, I'm gonna watch the parts. Okay, I'm watching the parts here and then events. Right, let's deploy the sample lab. Okay, never mind. So I'm deploying 
the center back here. Okay, now I just deployed a sample application where the part is, part is up and running here. And then let's see how we define the HPA. So here we define HPA so that it can scale on other on, on our custom metrics we define here. Now I'm saying to, I, I'm setting a threshold of <coughs> 0.8 here. So let's apply this. Uh, Okay. All right, we can see HP is deployed here. Now you could see here, the metric server haven't got the metrics yet. It's, uh, so HPA has a control loop that runs every 15 seconds by default that can be configurable. And uh, it's going to read the metrics from Prometheus and Prometheus adopter and then start We'll have to wait a few seconds. See, see it's still uh, our horizontal part auto scaler doesn't know the metrics yet. It's still taking, we just deployed the application now. It's going to take a few seconds, hopefully faster. Let's see. Okay. While, while that is done, so I just defined the threshold as 0 0.8 to, to see how scaling uh, happens. We'll update this uh, threshold to 0 0.3. Which is not like you can see here, we are thresholds are 800 millicores here. Let's see. Okay. okay. I have this HPA configured for uh, threshold for 300 millicores here. Okay. Now you see the HPA is able to get the values. So let's deploy, uh, change. Yeah, it's maybe because the HPA is deployed just now, so it just, it just uh, took some time to read it, the metrics. Yeah. And you can configure the scale down, scale up threshold as needed based on your needs, which is, you know, available on the HPA. And now I'll modify it to 300 millicores. Now you would see new parts would be coming up soon. See, uh, I could see, yeah. Yeah, the parts just scaling, is up, scaling is happening, and you could see new parts are coming up here. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to the presentation. And this is how we can use Prometheus adapter to scale HPA. And then let's see how we could use. Data. So in previous, we saw Prometheus adopter was presenting these metrics to HPA. In Keda, uh, I think I'll just give a brief uh, description about Keda. Keda is event-driven scaling, which is another operator that can be installed apart from uh, on the cluster. And then Keda, we can, they have custom CRs called uh, scaled object that internally creates HPA. Now, Keda has inbuilt uh, uh, metrics adapter that consumes the metrics from Prometheus and you know present it to HPA. How many of you heard about Keda here or work with Keda? Cool. So yeah, quite quite a number of people. So I guess Keda is graduated this year. I think yeah. Graduate straight. Okay. So let's see how we can let me set up this. Which next? Okay, I'm just watching the events down. I'm going to deploy a sample application again here. Uh, okay. Now, this is deploying an application here. We have a pod running here again. And let's see what is the configuration for our scale object. So this is a scale object, uh, which is a CR custom resource. So 
we could see here we are targeting the deployment named KubeCon 2024. And then uh, the trigger is Prometheus. And then we are using our Prometheus server, which can serve our metrics. And this is a cu custom metrics we defined in Prometheus and which with the thresholds of 0.8, right? It's nothing but 800 millicores. I'm creating the scale object now, which internally creates the HP for us. OK. Here we could see HP is created. And again, uh, horizontal power scalar is still waiting on the metrics. So it may take a few seconds here. And again, I'm going to update the custom metrics uh, or the threshold for the scale object. OK, I'm going to update the threshold to 300. Let's wait. OK. OK. So we could see here the HPA threshold is 800 millicores. And the current value is 36 millicores. OK, I may have to change it to really low. Or, or actually, we'll wait for a few seconds so that the metrics would be aggregated and collected here. While it is, it might take a few seconds for I think we can define the thing. Okay. So I'm changing the value to 300 now. Millicores. OK. Now the 800 is modified to 300. And at the current resource utilization is 375. It should trigger a scaling event. And you could see the board is scaling up again here. OK. This is how we use Keda to scale HPA based on custom metrics. And then I think two things I want to discuss here. First, Prometheus adopter. So what we observed is when we set up custom metrics and use Prometheus adopter, it is really hard for us to set up the metrics itself. Uh, not, not the metrics, how Prometheus adopter can read metrics from Prometheus and present it to HPA. Because we'll have to exclusively define how the metrics is exposed. But when you use uh, Keda, Keda has inbuilt uh, metrics. metrics adopter that can translate metrics and present it to our HPA. So we highly recommend to use Keda if you are using custom metrics to scale. And few things you have to consider while you know using HPA is select your metrics appropriately. Each application has a specific need, maybe HTTP requests or you know any other metrics specific to your application. So define that metrics and expose it. And then make sure you have scale threshold set properly. We don't need scaling happen you know, very frequently or it's not happening when required. And then monitoring and alerting is one big thing too. When you, when, when you enable HPA, you know, your needs are served based on your source utilization or whatever metrics you define. But there are cases where you know it can spin up many pods. So you, you'll, you just have to watch out and see why that's happening, or you, you need to tweak some of these HPA configurations itself. So okay, there are a few references here on how Prometheus Adopter, Keda, and HPA would work. Yep. So I think from what we have shown here as a demo so is pretty small usage of HPA, how it can be triggered with thresholds of CPU, right? So, but there are much in depth use cases of uh, a queue length, how a queue length can trigger based on the requests of, uh, for the scaling itself. 
So we have not gone into depth of the HTTP request and everything. We want to keep, we want to keep it very simple on the demo, so we just demo it. But uh, yeah, let's let's uh, deep dive into Q and A. If any questions. So we started with custom, uh, exclusively we haven't used custom metrics itself, we haven't. We started exploring a lot of these and we felt Keda external metrics available. We, we are mostly Azure shop, so we just use like service bus scalar. So we use yeah. those kind of So metrics. that's the service bus is the one that so, we, are, we, are evol yeah. we are evaluating it in the service bus with the queue length and uh, using that queue, scaling it across for the application needs. So we haven't gone production live yet with that, but we are, we are in that use case of uh, event streams. And we are looking at the HTTP requests to scale our uh, HTTP requests as a custom metrics and scale our resources. That's one thing still work in progress for us. Uh, I got one question. Yeah. Um, so as, as far as I know, with a Kubernetes HPA, um, it'll only increase the desired replica count as long as the current replicas are in a ready state or in a healthy state. Okay. Um, and so I've, I've seen some situations uh, where, uh, like say we have an a HTTP application that's handling incoming requests and it just gets flooded with too many requests and it causes the pods to crash. And so really what we need in that situation is to scale up because we have too much load for those pods and, and like ideally the pods wouldn't crash, right? Um, but I'm, in this situation what we found works is we just have to manually increase the desired replica count to cause a sudden burst of increase of pods to recover from that overwhelming load. So I'm curious if there's a way to achieve that through auto-scaling. I think, did you play with the scale down and scale up threshold? Like there are, in HPA itself, we have configuration. By default, HPA, if you don't define anything, I think five minutes is a scale up and scale down windows. I, I'm not sure, I think five minutes, but you can define those very sensitive Within seconds or something that would you know really scale up. So the, the time to it takes until because I, what I understood was your pods were not able to scale because they are crashed and but it is waiting on the timeline but your your requests are still waiting on right. That's the that's the issue. Yeah. So the so the pods crash. We need to scale up to handle the load, but the scale up will never happen because the pods are in crashing state. Right. Yeah. But that, why po pods crashing is something that you'll have to f see why wouldn't crash, like pods right. should be, or you, you have to make sure you have readiness probe so that the crash, path, crash, crash pods wouldn't serve those requests, or else configure your HPA so that you know scaling is sensitive to the request. Do you use HTTP request or something else to scale? Or um, what, what is a? I, I think in that particular example that I was thinking, oh, of, okay, I think okay. we're scaling on like CPU usage or something like that. Yeah, Which I think really CPU is, and memory are ahead. very, basic uh, utilization, it, but it's still helpful for 90% of our workloads, generally talking, right? And again, by defining custom metrics, where you could really shine specific to your application need. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. So as of now, as I said, HTTP, okay, I'll repeat the question. So what are the custom metrics we are exploring? So majority of our custom metrics, or are, are I would say external metrics are served via Keda as a scalers, but there is one which we are very keen, HTTP requests. And we have in pipeline with the monitoring tools also. So we have something in the pipeline with the monitoring alerts so that it can trigger based on some monitorings like, like Anything that Nati has mentioned is something. So, yeah. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Thank okay. You. Thank you, guys. Thanks.